Hello again, it's Dr. Harim Jafar. Uh, today I will try to continue our previous lecture, which was in general disease in childhood. Please subscribe to our channel HL Talent to get more videos. So, we discussed the changes that are associated with normal development. We discussed the gingival disease in childhood. And today we are discussing gingival manifestation of systemic disease and the condition of periodontium in case of malocclusion and mucogingival problems. And I'll give you some advice and conclusions regarding this subject. So, regarding the gingival manifestation of systemic disease, we know that systemic disease that are resulting in periodontitis is more often, uh, often occur in a child than in adults. And many diseases, however, are expressed differently in children than in adults. Acute necrotizing gingivitis is very rarely seen, except in the cases of primary or secondary immune suppression, Down syndrome, or severe malnutrition. Well, in this case, the child may complain of severe pain and discomfort while eating, also have a mal odor or a fetid breath. One of the systemic diseases that are uh, very important to be considered is a diabetes mellitus. And we know that the type 1, which is insulin dependent, is more often okay in children and young adults than in uh, type 2 or non-insulin dependent. And as the adult, as in the diabetic adults, gingival inflammation and periodontitis are more prevalent in affected children than the unaffected one. Clinical consequences include premature tooth loss and impaired immune response to the oral flora. And the severity of periodontal disease is worse in children with poor metabolic control or uncontrolled diabetic. Although destructive changes are rather rare in healthy children, periodontal destruction can be observed in diabetic children, usually appearing around the time of puberty and becoming progressively worse as the children mature into adulthood. So, a good oral hygiene care is highly recommended. In case of leukemia, we know that the most common type of cancer in childhood and children is leukemia. And acute lymphocytic leukemia accounts for the majority of this type of cancer. It occurs in children uh, under the age of 7 years of age. And leukemia must be considered in the differential diagnosis for children who present with the hallmark features of 1. Acute gingival enlargement, ulceration, bleeding and infection as you may see it inside the mouth of leukemic patient. So, if you see a case like that, one of your differential diagnoses should be leukemia in child. In cases of congenital anomalies, taking into an example a Down syndrome, it's another congenital condition that would be diagnosed before expression of periodontal disease. And the affected individual experience a high prevalence or severe aggressive form of periodontitis. The disease process is thought to be related to some kind of host susceptibility, resulting in ex uh, an exaggerated immune inflammatory response, rather than a reaction to a specific causative microbes. So here the immune response is the dominant not the microbes. So these are regarding the systemic diseases, some of the systemic diseases. Well, in cases of the condition of periodontium in malocclusion and mucogingival problem, that I indicated an association between abnormal tooth position and gingivitis. Crowding in the mixed dentition can often make plug and food removal more difficult leading to an increased incidence of gingivitis. Severe changes may include gingival enlargement, discoloration, occasional ulceration, and the formation of deep pockets or pseudopockets. General, generally, gingival health can be restored by orthodontic correction, but 
failure to align the teeth doesn't necessarily have an effect on periodontal disease later in life. So it's better to try the periodontal, uh, the, the orthodontic treatment. In case of mucogingival problem, the prevalence of mucogingival problem uh, and gingival recession uh, in the childhood is from 1% and uh, to 19% depending on the criteria that are used to assess the condition. Evidence suggests that some mucogingival problem may start in the primary dentition as a consequence of developmental aberration and eruption, in eruption and deficiencies in the thickness of the periodontium. High frenal attachment may also be a factor in the development of mucogingival problems. In the mixed dentition, recession is the most is most often found on the facial aspect of mandibular permanent incisor, like you see it here. Uh, secondary to rotation or labial positioning related to the space problem. Although erupting permanent lower incisor often show minimal attached gingiva, gingival width often increase as the teeth erupt and stimulate the bone development. So don't worry, you have a, a, a few millimeter of attached gingiva but after that it will increase during aging process. The maxillary canine region is also prone to localized gingival recession. Late erupting canine in a crowded dentition may be displaced buccally and it will erupt, in, erupt into uh, near an attached gingiva or mucosa and increasing the risk of insufficient gingival tissue width and recession. Recession also may be associated with an anterior open bite secondary to labial inclination of the teeth. Orthodontic treatment and realignment may be necessary to protect the integrity of the attached gingiva. Mucogingival problem also can result from fastidious habits or excessive tooth brushing either by parent or the child. Because the width of the attached gingiva increase with age, any of these problems may result spontaneously, suggesting a cautious approach to treatment with, uh, with a delicate monitoring and, uh, instead of uh, immediate surgical intervention. So don't jump to the surgical treatment. Just wait until the, until the adulthood or until the child will mature uh, and uh, you will find that this problem is going off or it stays. When it stays, you can bring your treatment. So, as a conclusion, As gingivitis is common in childhood, while periodontitis is uncommon to happen, but aggressive form of periodontitis is common in childhood. Biofilm induced gingivitis is very common in children, although it may be less intense than, than what's found in adults. Children should have annual evaluation since the eruption of the deciduous teeth. Why? We should have a periodontal evaluation including recording of pocket depth, gingival recession, and gingival hyperplasia soon after the deciduous teeth erupt and followed by annual re-evaluation. Because oral hygiene habits should be, should be imprinted early in life with instruction on technique and direction on frequencies of plug removal procedures. And this will form a foundation of a lifetime of dedication to periodontal health. So should be, uh, this is very important, should be took in, into consideration. And some systemic disorders commonly associated with periodontal disease present initially in child, like what happened in 
leukemia and Down syndrome. And clinicians should be aware of children's special needs and condition. And recommendation regarding home plug control routine should be individualized for each patient according to the periodontal disease and the developmental stage. The periodontium of primary dentition, this is the conclusion, the periodontium of primary dentition differ from that of permanent dentition, so you should be aware of that. And this is our lecture regarding talking about gingival disease in childhood. I hope you get benefit from it and thank you for your listening. Uh, in the next le lecture, we may discuss the gingival recession or discometer gingivitis. Thank you.